Lionel Messi is one of the greatest footballers of all time, known for his incredible skill and talent on the pitch. But behind the success and fame, lies a story of struggle and determination that began in his hometown of Rosario, Argentina. Messi was born on June 24, 1987, in Rosario, a city located in the province of Santa Fe, Argentina. He was the third of four children born to Jorge Messi, a factory steel worker, and Celia Messi, who worked part-time as a cleaner. Messi's parents were both immigrants from Italy, and they raised their children in a tight-knit, working-class family. From a young age, Messi showed a natural talent for football. He began playing in a local club called Granoli, where his father worked as a coach. It was there that Messi first caught the attention of local scouts, who recognized his incredible dribbling skills and ability to score goals. However, Messi's childhood was not without its challenges. At the age of 11, he was diagnosed with growth hormone deficiency, a condition that would have a significant impact on his life and career. The treatment for the condition was expensive, and Messi's family could not afford to pay for it. Fortunately, Messi's talent on the football pitch caught the attention of local club Newell's Old Boys, who offered him a place in their youth academy. The club also agreed to pay for Messi's medical treatment, which allowed him to receive the hormone therapy he needed to grow and develop as a player. Despite the challenges he faced, Messi continued to excel on the football pitch. He quickly rose through the ranks at Newell's Old Boys, and by the age of 16, he was playing for their first team. However, Messi's career at Newell's Old Boys was short-lived. In 2003, he was offered a trial with Barcelona, one of the biggest football clubs in Europe. Messi impressed the Barcelona coaches with his skill and talent, and the club offered him a place in their youth academy, La Masia. Messi moved to Barcelona in 2003, leaving behind his family and friends in Rosario. It was a difficult transition for the young player, who struggled to adapt to life in a new country and culture. He also faced challenges on the pitch, as he was often sidelined due to injuries. But Messi's talent and determination soon shone through. In 2004, he made his debut for Barcelona's first team, becoming the youngest player to ever play for the club. Over the next few years, Messi established himself as one of Barcelona's key players, helping the team win numerous titles and accolades. Messi's success on the pitch has been nothing short of remarkable. He has won numerous awards and accolades throughout his career, including seven Ballon d'Or awards, which are given to the best player in the world. He has also helped Barcelona win numerous titles, including 10 La Liga titles, 7 Copa del Rey titles, and 4 UEFA Champions League titles. But despite his success, Messi has never forgotten his roots. He remains deeply connected to his hometown of Rosario, and often returns to visit his family and friends. He has also been involved in numerous charitable efforts in the city, including the construction of a new sports center for local children. In addition to his success on the pitch, Messi has also been involved in numerous charitable and philanthropic efforts throughout his career. In 2007, he established the Leo Messi Foundation, a charitable organization focused on improving access to health care education, and sports for disadvantaged children around the world. The foundation has completed numerous projects in Argentina and other countries, including the construction of a new children's hospital in his hometown of Rosario. 
Messi has also been an advocate for environmental causes, including a campaign to reduce plastic pollution in the ocean. In 2019, he joined forces with the footwear company Adidas to launch a new line of shoes made from recycled plastic waste collected from beaches and coastal communities. Despite his many achievements, Messi has also faced criticism and controversy throughout his career. In 2013, he was accused of tax fraud in Spain, and he faced a lengthy legal battle before eventually reaching a settlement with Spanish authorities. He has also faced criticism from some quarters for his performance with the Argentine national team, which has struggled to win major international titles despite Messi's individual success. Nevertheless, Messi remains one of the most beloved and respected footballers in the world, admired for his skill, sportsmanship, and humility both on and off the pitch. His story is a testament to the power of hard work, determination, and talent, and a source of inspiration for countless young footballers around the world. Another aspect of Messi's life and career that is worth exploring is his impact on the sport of football itself. Messi's talent and skill on the pitch have inspired countless young players around the world to take up the sport and to strive for excellence. His style of play, characterized by his exceptional dribbling skills, lightning-fast speed, and precise finishing, has redefined what it means to be a great footballer. Moreover, Messi's success has also drawn attention to the importance of team dynamics in football. Despite his individual talent and skill, Messi has always emphasized the importance of teamwork and collaboration in achieving success on the pitch. He has been a key player in some of the greatest teams in football history, including Barcelona's golden generation of the mid-2000s. And the Argentine national team that reached the final of the 2014 World Cup. At the same time, Messi's success has also highlighted some of the challenges and inequalities that exist within the sport of football. Despite his incredible talent, Messi has faced discrimination and prejudice throughout his career, both on and off the pitch. As a young player in Argentina, he was often overlooked by scouts and coaches due to his small stature and physical limitations. Later, as a professional player in Spain, he faced racism and xenophobia from some fans and opponents. Moreover, the sport of football itself is not without its problems. Issues such as corruption, match-fixing, and exploitation of young players continue to plague the sport at all levels. This means that while Messi's success has inspired countless young players around the world, it has also highlighted the need for reform and change within the sport itself. Nevertheless, Messi's impact on the sport of football cannot be overstated. He has redefined what it means to be a great footballer, inspiring countless young players around the world to take up the sport and to strive for excellence. He has also emphasized the importance of teamwork and collaboration in achieving success on the pitch, and has been a key player in some of the greatest teams in football history. In addition to his impact on football, Messi's life and career also offer lessons and insights that extend beyond the world of sport. His story is a testament to the power of hard work, determination, and talent, and a source of inspiration for anyone who aspires to greatness in their chosen field. Moreover, Messi's success has also drawn attention to issues such as income inequality, social mobility, and access to health care and education. George Weah is a former professional football player from Liberia who had a successful career both on and off the field. Born on October 1, 1966 in Monrovia, Liberia, Weah grew up in a poor neighborhood and had to overcome many challenges in order to achieve his goals. 
At a young age, Wea discovered his love for football and began playing on the streets with his friends. He later joined the Young Survivors Youth Team and eventually moved up to play for the Mighty Barrel Team in Liberia's 1st Division. In 1988, Wea was signed by the Cameroonian team Tonnerre Yaoundé, where he played for a year before moving to his Monaco in France. Wea quickly established himself as a top player and helped lead Monaco to the French Cup title in 1991. He then moved on to play for Paris Saint-Germain and AC Milan, where he won numerous awards and accolades, including the Ballon d'Or in 1995. Throughout his career, Wea was known for his incredible speed, agility, and skill on the field. He was also admired for his humble personality and commitment to giving back to his community. In fact, he established the George Wea Foundation in 1998 to provide aid to children affected by the civil war in Liberia. Wea retired from professional football in 2003 and turned his attention to politics. He ran for president of Liberia in 2005 but was ultimately defeated. He then served as a goodwill ambassador for the United Nations and continued to work with his foundation to support children in need. In 2017, Wea ran for president of Liberia again and was elected in a historic election. He became the first former professional football player to be elected as a head of state. During his presidency, Wea has focused on improving education, health care, and infrastructure in Liberia. Off the field, Wea has also been recognized for his humanitarian work and was awarded the FIFA Fair Play Award in 1996. He was also named a United Nations Goodwill Ambassador in 1997 and received the Arthur Ashe Courage Award in 2004. Despite his success and fame, Wea has never forgotten his roots and continues to be a role model and inspiration to many people in Liberia and around the world. George Wea was born in a poor neighborhood in Monrovia, the capital of Liberia. His parents, William T. Wea and Anna Kiwea, both from different tribes in Liberia, struggled to make ends meet to provide for their family. George was the last born of 14 children, and his upbringing was anything but easy. His father worked as a mechanic, while his mother sold homemade cassava-based snacks on the streets to provide for the family. Despite the poverty in his household, George was always determined to succeed in life. Wea was married to Clara Wea, and together they have three children, George Wea Jr., Timothy Wea, and Tita Wea. George Wea Jr. is also a professional footballer who currently plays as a forward for the Paris Saint-Germain Academy. Wea is also known for his humanitarian work, particularly in his home country of Liberia. In 1997, he established the George Wea Foundation, which focuses on providing education, health care, and community development programs to the less privileged in Liberia. He also established a sports academy in Liberia in 2015, aimed at nurturing young football talents and providing them with opportunities to succeed in their chosen sport. In addition to his own foundation, Wea has also collaborated with various international organizations to help improve the lives of people in Liberia. In 2017, he was appointed as a goodwill ambassador for the United Nations Development Program, UNP and has since worked on various projects with the organization. Aimed at improving the living conditions of people in Liberia. Wea's dedication to improving the lives of others has earned him many accolades and awards. Including the Arthur Ashe Courage Award from the ESPY Awards in 2004, in recognition of his philanthropic work. Despite his humble beginnings, Wea has been able to achieve great success in both his professional football career and his humanitarian work. His love for his family and his country has always been evident in his actions. 
and he continues to inspire many people around the world through his perseverance and dedication to making the world a better place. George Weah, the legendary Liberian footballer, has had a successful career on and off the field, which has made him one of the wealthiest African athletes. Throughout his football career, Weah has earned a considerable amount of money through his talent, endorsements, and investments. Weah's professional career began in Cameroon, where he played for Tonnerre Yaoundé before moving to French club as Monaco. After several years with Monaco, he signed with Paris Saint-Germain in 1992, where he became the highest paid player in the world, earning around $14 million a year. In 1995, Weah moved to AC Milan, where he won several individual and team awards, including the Ballon d'Or in 1995, which is awarded to the best player in Europe. He played for Milan until 2000, earning an estimated $4 million a year during his time with the club. Weah continued to play football until 2003, playing for clubs like Chelsea, Manchester City, and Marseille. He also played for the Liberian national team until 2007. Throughout his football career, Wea earned an estimated $75 million in salary and endorsements. In addition to his football earnings, Wea has also invested wisely, particularly in real estate. He has owned properties in Liberia, the United States, and Europe. He also owned a mobile phone company in Liberia and a television station in Monrovia. Wea's net worth is estimated to be around $30 million. In 2014, he declared his assets, which included several properties, a hotel in Monrovia, and $200,000 in a bank account. Wea's success both on and off the field has allowed him to give back to his community. In 1997, he established the George Weah Foundation, which aims to provide educational opportunities and scholarships to disadvantaged children in Liberia. He has also been involved in various charitable initiatives, including supporting HIV-AIDS awareness campaigns and providing aid to victims of natural disasters. Weah's success has also led to him being recognized by various organizations. In 2004, he was appointed as a goodwill ambassador for the United Nations Development Program. And in 2018, he was elected as the president of Liberia, becoming the first former footballer to hold the position. George Weah's success on the field is reflected in the numerous awards and accolades he has received throughout his career. In 1995, he was named FIFA World Player of the Year, becoming the first African player to receive the award. Kaká, whose real name is Ricardo Ezexan dos Santos Leda, is a retired Brazilian professional footballer who played as an attacking midfielder. He was born on April 22, 1982, in Brasilia, the capital city of Brazil, and grew up in a middle-class family. Kaká's father, Bosco Ezexan Pereira Leda, is a retired engineer, while his mother, Simone dos Santos, is a retired teacher. Kaká has one younger brother, Rodrigo Ezexan dos Santos Leda, who is also a former professional footballer. As a child, Kaká grew up playing football in the streets of Brasilia with his friends. He was scouted by a local club, São Paulo FC, at the age of eight, and he joined the club's youth academy. Kaká's talent soon became apparent, and he was promoted to the club's senior team at the age of 18. Kaká made his professional debut for Sao Paulo FC in 2001 and quickly became one of the team's star players. He won his first major trophy with the club in 2002, 
when Sao Paulo FC won the Copa Libertadores, South America's most prestigious club competition. Kaká was named the tournament's best player and earned a call-up to the Brazilian national team. In 2003, Kaká made a move to Italian club AC Milan for a transfer fee of 8.5 million euros. He quickly established himself as one of the best midfielders in the world, helping AC Milan win the Serie A title in his first season. Kaká's performances earned him the FIFA World Player of the Year award in 2007, as well as the Boulogne d'Or, which is awarded to the best player in Europe. Kaká's success on the field continued, and he played a key role in helping AC Milan win the UEFA Champions League in 2007. He was named the man of the match in the final, scoring a goal and setting up another in a 2-1 win over Liverpool. Kaká's success at AC Milan earned him a reputation as one of the best midfielders of his generation. In 2009, Kaká made a move to Spanish giants Real Madrid for a transfer fee of 68.5 million euros, which at the time was a world record transfer fee. Kaká struggled to replicate his form at AC Milan at Real Madrid, however, and he was plagued by injuries during his time at the club. Despite this, Kaká still managed to win the Copa del Rey and the La Liga title during his four-year spell at Real Madrid. Kaká returned to AC Milan on loan in 2013, before signing for Major League Soccer, MLS, Club Orlando City SC in 2014. Kaká spent three seasons at Orlando City before retiring from professional football in 2017. Off the field, Kaká is known for his strong Christian faith. He is a devout evangelical Christian and has spoken openly about his faith in interviews. Kaká is also known for his charity work, and he has been involved in several philanthropic projects throughout his career. In 2004, he founded the Kaká Foundation, which aims to help underprivileged children in Brazil. Kaká was born to Simone dos Santos and Bosco Ezexan Pereira Leda on April 22, 1982, in Brasilia, Brazil. He was the oldest of two siblings, with a younger brother, Rodrigo Ezexan Pereira Leda, who also became a professional footballer. Kaká's father, Bosco, was also a professional footballer who played for several clubs in Brazil. Kaká grew up in a devoutly Christian family, and his faith played a significant role in his life. He once said, God is everything to me. Without him, I wouldn't be here today. Kaká's faith is reflected in his on-field behavior, as he has been known to kneel and pray after scoring a goal. Kaká is married to Caroline Celico a Brazilian model and singer. The couple got married on December 23, 2005, in a ceremony in Sao Paulo, Brazil. They have two children together, a son named Luca Celico Leda and a daughter named Isabella Celico Leda. Kaká and Caroline are actively involved in charity work, and they founded the Kaká and Caroline Celico Foundation which provides education and support to underprivileged children in Brazil. Kaká has also been involved in several other charitable organizations, including UNICEF and the Red Cross. Kaká's family has always been a source of support and inspiration for him. His father Bosco played an important role in his development as a footballer, coaching him and helping him to improve his skills. Kaká has also spoken about the influence of his brother Rodrigo, who is also a footballer.
Kaká's family has remained close throughout his career, and they have often attended his matches to cheer him on. His wife Caroline has been a constant source of support, and Kaká has credited her with helping him to maintain his focus and motivation. In 2015, Kaká's family faced a tragedy when Caroline's younger brother, Lucas Selico, was involved in a fatal car accident. Kaká and Caroline were both deeply affected by the loss, and they have since become advocates for road safety awareness. Kaká, throughout his career, was a highly successful and financially prosperous player. He was one of the highest paid footballers during his playing days and earned lucrative endorsements and sponsorship deals from major brands. Kaká's first professional contract was signed in 2001 with Brazilian club São Paulo, where he played for three seasons before signing with AC Milan in 2003. At Milan, Kaká signed a five-year contract, reportedly worth €8.5 million Euros annually. His salary was raised to €10 million Euros after he won the Ballon d'Or award in 2007. In 2009, Real Madrid signed Kaká for a transfer fee of €67 million, Euros, making him the second most expensive player in the world at the time, behind Cristiano Ronaldo. He signed a six-year contract with Madrid, worth €9 million Euros per year, making him one of the highest-paid players in the world. During his time at Real Madrid, Kaká earned additional revenue through various endorsements and sponsorship deals. He was sponsored by Adidas, Gillette, Pepsi, and Hyundai, among others. He also appeared in several television commercials and advertisements, further increasing his revenue stream. After four seasons with Madrid, Kaká returned to AC Milan in 2013, where he played for one season before moving to MLS side Orlando City SC in the United States. In the United States, Kaká reportedly earned an annual salary of $6.6 million, making him one of the highest paid players in the league. Throughout his career, Kaká was known for his charitable endeavors and his work with various organizations, including UNICEF and the Brazilian Ministry of Education. He donated a significant portion of his earnings to charity, including the Kaká Foundation, which he founded in 2004. The foundation is dedicated to helping underprivileged children in Brazil and other parts of the world. Kaká's success and financial prosperity continued beyond his playing career. Mario Kempis is a legendary Argentine football player who played as a striker during his professional career. He is widely considered one of the best Argentine players of all time and is often referred to as El Matador due to his finishing skills on the pitch. Kempis was born on July 15, 1954, in Belleville, Argentina. Kempis began his professional career with the local club Instituto de Córdoba in 1970, where he quickly established himself as a prolific goal scorer. After four seasons with Instituto, he was signed by Rosario Central, where he won the Copa Argentina in 1971. His performances with Rosario Central earned him a call-up to the Argentine national team, and he was a key player for the Albiceleste during the 1974 World Cup, scoring four goals. Kempis' breakout year came in 1976 when he joined Valencia in Spain's La Liga. In his first season with Valencia, he won the Pichichi Trophy as the top scorer in the league, and he led the club to their first La Liga title in 1978. 
Kempis' performances for Valencia during his six-year spell at the club cemented his status as one of the best strikers in the world. After leaving Valencia in 1981, Kempis had brief spells at River Plate, Rosario Central, and Austrian Club Street. Poulton before retiring from professional football in 1996. In total, he scored 358 goals and 678 appearances throughout his career. Kempis' success was not limited to the club level, he was also a key player for the Argentine national team during his career. He scored two goals in the 1978 World Cup final against the Netherlands, leading Argentina to their first ever World Cup title. In total, he scored 20 goals in 43 appearances for the national team. Off the pitch, Kempis is known for his charitable work and involvement in social causes. He has served as a United Nations Goodwill Ambassador and has been involved in campaigns to raise awareness about issues such as HIV-AIDS and poverty. Kempis has been honored with numerous awards throughout his career. In addition to his Pichichi Trophy and World Cup title, he was named the South American Footballer of the Year in 1978 and was included in the FIFA World Cup All-Star Team in both 1978 and 1982. He was also inducted into the Argentine Football Hall of Fame in 1996. In terms of his personal life, Kempis has been married twice. He has four children from his first marriage, and he currently lives in Valencia, Spain with his second wife, Marissa Soto. Mario Kempis was born on July 15, 1954, in Belleville, a small town in Argentina. He was the third of six siblings, raised in a working-class family. His parents, Mario and Carmen Kempis, were of Spanish descent, and his father worked as a carpenter, while his mother was a homemaker. Kempis grew up playing football on the streets of Belleville with his friends, and by the age of seven, he had already joined a local youth team. Kempis' family was very supportive of his football aspirations. His father would often take him to matches and encourage him to train harder. However, when Kempis was just 17, tragedy struck when his father passed away. Despite the loss, Kempis continued to pursue his football career, which ultimately led him to become one of the greatest football players in Argentine history. Kempis got married to Maria Marta, his childhood sweetheart, in 1976. Together they have three children, two daughters, and a son. Kempis has always credited his family for their unwavering support, especially during his career highs and lows. In 1981, Kempis' career took him to Spain, where he signed with Valencia CF. He spent six seasons playing for Valencia, where he became a club icon and a fan favorite. During his time at Valencia, Kempis won the Copa del Rey in 1979 and 1980 and also helped the team reach the UEFA Cup final in 1980. Kempis' family moved with him to Spain and settled in Valencia, where they lived for over a decade. According to Kempis, the city became his second home, and he has always spoken highly of the people and the culture. In 1986, Kempis left Valencia and returned to Argentina to play for River Plate, where he spent two seasons before retiring from professional football. After retiring from football, Kempis moved back to Valencia with his family and started working as a football commentator. 
He also worked as a coach and managed several teams, including the Argentine national team and Valencia CF. In 2018, Kempis suffered a heart attack while playing football with his friends. He was rushed to the hospital, where he underwent an emergency angioplasty procedure to unblock his arteries. Kempis recovered and later spoke about the experience, urging people to take care of their health and to listen to their bodies. Kempis continues to be an active member of the football community, working as a commentator and an analyst. He also frequently participates in charity events and supports various causes, including environmental conservation and youth development. Mario Kempis had a successful career as a footballer, and his success on the field translated to financial success off the field. Over the course of his career, he earned a considerable amount of money from playing football and endorsements. Kempis began his professional football career at the age of 16 with the club Instituto de Córdoba in his hometown of Córdoba, Argentina. After a few successful seasons, he was transferred to Rosario Central, one of the biggest clubs in Argentina at the time. Kempis' performances at Rosario Central caught the attention of the national team selectors, and he was called up to represent Argentina in the 1974 World Cup. It was at the World Cup that Kempis' career really took off. He scored six goals in the tournament, including two in the final against the Netherlands, which Argentina won 3-1. His performances at the tournament earned him the golden boot for the tournament's top scorer and the golden ball for the best player. After the World Cup, Kempis was signed by Valencia CF, a Spanish club. He played for Valencia for six seasons, during which time he won the Spanish Cup twice and the European Cup Winners' Cup once. Kempis' success on the field with Valencia helped him earn a substantial salary and endorsement deals. In 1981, Kempis was transferred to River Plate, one of the biggest clubs in Argentina. He played for River Plate for two seasons before moving to Spanish club Hercules CF. After a few seasons at Hercules, Kempis moved to Austrian club Wiener SC, where he played for one season before retiring from professional football in 1987. Georgi Hagi, nicknamed the Maradona of the Carpathians, is a Romanian former professional football player and current manager. Born on February 5, 1965, in Sassel, Romania, Hagi is considered one of the greatest football players in Romanian history and one of the best attacking midfielders of all time. Hagi grew up in the city of Constanza, where he started playing football at a young age. His father, also named Gheorghe was a former football player and helped guide his son's development as a player. At the age of 14, Hagi was scouted by the local team for Ole Constanza and was soon offered a spot on their youth team. In 1982, at the age of 17, Hagi made his debut for Ferul Constanza's first team. He quickly caught the attention of the Romanian football community with his technical skills and ability to score from distance. In 1987, he was signed by the Romanian powerhouse Steaua București, where he won three consecutive domestic titles and helped the team reach the European Cup final in 1989. 
Hagi's success at Steaua Bucharest caught the attention of European clubs, and in 1990, he signed with Italian club Brescia. However, he struggled to adapt to the Italian style of play and was soon loaned to Spanish team Real Valladolid. He later played for other Spanish clubs such as Barcelona and Galatasaray in Turkey. Throughout his career, Hagi was known for his exceptional vision, ball control, passing, and free kick abilities. He was a gifted playmaker and was able to create scoring opportunities for himself and his teammates. He was also a prolific scorer, scoring 134 goals in his professional career. Hagi's success on the pitch was not limited to his club career. He was also an integral part of the Romanian national team, playing in three World Cups and helping his country reach the quarterfinals of the 1994 tournament. He scored 35 goals in 125 appearances for Romania. After retiring from playing in 2001, Hagi turned to management and began coaching the Romanian club FC Ferul Constanța. He later coached other Romanian teams such as FC Steaua București and FC Viatorul Constanța, which he also owns. Under his leadership, FC Viatorul Constanța won the Romanian Liga I title in 2017, the first in the club's history. Hagi's contribution to Romanian football has been recognized by the Romanian Football Federation, which awarded him the title of Romanian Footballer of the Year seven times, a record for the award. He was also included in the UEFA European Championship team of the tournament in 1984 and 2000 and was named in the FIFA World Cup All-Star team in 1994. In addition to his footballing achievements, Hagi is also known for his philanthropy. He has established the Gheorghe Hagi Foundation, which provides support to underprivileged children in Romania by offering them access to education and sports facilities. Gheorghe Hagi was born on February 5, 1965, in Sassel, Romania. He is the son of Theodore Hagi and Maria Hagi, who both played a significant role in his football career. Theodore Hagi was a football coach and former player, and he trained Georgi Hagi from a very young age. Maria Hagi was also a football enthusiast and provided her son with unwavering support throughout his career. Georgi Hagi has three sisters, all of whom are younger than him. One of his sisters, Luminita, is a former professional handball player who represented Romania in the Olympics. Hagi's family had a big impact on his life and career. His father introduced him to football at the age of 5 and trained him until he was selected for the national team at the age of 17. His mother was always supportive of his football career and was present at many of his games. Hagi also has a son, Yanis Hagi, who was born on October 22, 1998. Like his father, Ianis is a talented footballer who currently plays for Scottish club Rangers FC and the Romanian national team. The Hagi family is known for its passion for football, and Georgi Hagi's success in the sport has made him a hero in Romania. Throughout his career, Hagi has remained close to his family, 
and he has often credited them for his success. In an interview, he once said, I'm proud of my family, my parents, my wife, my children. They were always there for me, and I couldn't have done it without them. Hagi's family continues to support him, and he remains an inspiration to many young footballers in Romania and around the world. Gheorghe Hagi had a very successful career as a footballer, playing for clubs like Steaua Bucharest, Real Madrid, FC Barcelona, and Galatasaray. He also played for the Romanian national team and was one of the best players in the world during his prime. His success on the pitch also brought him significant financial rewards. During his career, Hagi earned a total of 28.8 million euros in salary, according to the website Celebrity Net Worth. However, this figure does not include his earnings from endorsements and other business ventures. After retiring from football, Hagi became a successful businessman, investing in real estate, hotels, and other industries. He also founded the Hagi Academy, a football academy in his hometown of Constanza, Romania, that has produced many talented players over the years. In addition to his business ventures, Hagi has also been involved in various charitable activities. He established the Gheorghe Hagi Foundation in 2003, which supports children from disadvantaged backgrounds and helps them pursue their education and sporting ambitions. Gheorghe Hagi is known to have a close circle of friends, who have been with him through thick and thin. Some of his closest friends are fellow footballers, while others come from different walks of life. One of Hagi's closest friends is former Romanian international and fellow footballer, Dan Petrescu. The two played together for Romania and were teammates at both Steaua Bucharest and Barcelona. Petrescu has often spoken about his admiration for Hagi's talent and work ethic, and the two have remained close friends long after their playing days ended. Another close friend of Hagi is former Galatasaray teammate and Turkish international, Hakan Shukur. The two played together during Galatasaray's successful spell in the late 1990s, winning the UEFA Cup in 2000. Shukur has often spoken about the respect he has for Hagi's footballing abilities and leadership qualities, and the two have maintained a strong friendship over the years. Hagi is also known to be close friends with former Romanian international and Steaua Bucharest teammate, Victor Pichurka. The two played together at Steaua during the early 1990s, and Pichurka went on to become a successful manager in Romanian football. Despite occasional differences in their professional lives, the two have remained close friends and often speak about their shared experiences on and off the field. Lionel Messi was born on June 24, 1987, in Rosario, Argentina, to Jorge Messi and Celia Cucciatini. His father was a factory steel worker, while his mother worked as a part-time cleaner. Messi was the third of four children, with two older brothers, Rodrigo and Matias, and a younger sister, Maria Sal. Messi's family had a strong Italian heritage, with both of his parents being of Italian descent. 
Messi's paternal grandparents had immigrated to Argentina from the Italian city of Ancona in the early 20th century, while his maternal grandparents had also immigrated from Italy. Messi grew up in a close-knit, working-class family, and was raised in the La Bajada neighborhood of Rosario. From a young age, he showed a natural talent for football, and began playing in a local club called Granoli, where his father worked as a coach. Despite his talent on the football pitch, Messi's childhood was not without its challenges. At the age of 11, he was diagnosed with growth hormone deficiency, a condition that would have a significant impact on his life and career. The treatment for the condition was expensive, and Messi's family could not afford to pay for it. Fortunately, Messi's talent on the football pitch caught the attention of local club Newell's Old Boys, who offered him a place in their youth academy. The club also agreed to pay for Messi's medical treatment, which allowed him to receive the hormone therapy he needed to grow and develop as a player. Messi's upbringing was marked by a strong sense of family and community. Despite his success on the football pitch, he has remained grounded and humble and has often spoken about the importance of his family and his roots in Rosario. In 2017, Messi married his longtime partner, Antonella Rocketso, in a ceremony in Rosario. The couple has three children together, Chago, Mateo, and Ciro. In addition to his immediate family, Messi is also close to his extended family, including his cousins, aunts, and uncles. He has often spoken about the importance of his family in his life and career and has credited them with providing him with the support and encouragement he needed to succeed. Messi's family background and upbringing also played a role in shaping his values and character. He has often spoken about the importance of hard work, determination, and humility values that were instilled in him by his parents and extended family. Moreover, Messi's family background has also influenced his identity as an Argentine of Italian descent. He has often spoken about his pride in his Italian heritage and has even expressed his desire to play for the Italian national team. although he ultimately chose to represent Argentina at the international level. In addition to his family, Messi's upbringing was also shaped by his experiences growing up in Rosario, a city with a strong footballing tradition. Football is deeply ingrained in the culture and identity of Rosario, and Messi's talent on the pitch quickly caught the attention of local scouts and coaches. However, Messi's success on the football pitch also brought with it a degree of pressure and expectation. As a young player, he was often compared to other Argentine footballing legends, such as Diego Maradona and Gabriel Batistuta, and faced criticism and scrutiny from both fans and the media. Nevertheless, Messi remained focused and determined, and continue to work hard to improve his game. His talent and skill on the pitch eventually earned him a place in the youth academy at Barcelona, one of the biggest football clubs in Europe, where he would go on to achieve global fame and success. His talent and skill on the pitch eventually earned him a place in the youth academy at Barcelona. one of the biggest football clubs in Europe, where he would go on to achieve global fame and success. 
Messi's upbringing and family background also played a role in shaping his philanthropic efforts and commitment to giving back to his community. His experiences growing up in a working-class family and receiving support from his community and football club have influenced his desire to help others. In 2007, Messi founded the Leo Messi Foundation, a charitable organization focused on improving access to health care, education, and sports for disadvantaged children around the world. The foundation has completed numerous projects in Argentina and other countries, including the construction of a new children's hospital in his hometown of Rosario. Moreover, Messi's success on the football pitch has also given him a platform to raise awareness and support for social causes. He has been an advocate for environmental causes, including a campaign to reduce plastic pollution in the ocean. In 2019, he joined forces with the footwear company Adidas to launch a new line of shoes made from recycled plastic waste collected from beaches and coastal communities. In 2019, he joined forces with the footwear company Adidas. To launch a new line of shoes made from recycled plastic waste collected from beaches and coastal communities. Messi's commitment to philanthropy and social causes has earned him widespread admiration and respect, both on and off the football pitch. He has used his success and his platform to make a positive difference in the lives of countless disadvantaged children around the world. and to raise awareness and support for important social and environmental causes. In addition to his philanthropic efforts, Messi's upbringing and family background have also influenced his values and character as a person. He has remained grounded and humble despite his success, and has often spoken about the importance of teamwork, collaboration, and respect for others. Moreover, Messi's experiences growing up in a working-class family have also influenced his views on wealth and income inequality. He has spoken out against the growing gap between the rich and the poor, and has called for greater investment in social welfare, education, and economic development. Another aspect of Messi's upbringing and family background that is worth exploring is his experience with growth hormone deficiency, a condition that had a significant impact on his life and career. At the age of 11, Messi was diagnosed with the condition, which meant that his body was unable to produce enough human growth hormone, a key factor in the development of bones and muscles. Without treatment, Messi's growth and physical development would have been severely limited, potentially preventing him from pursuing his dream of becoming a professional footballer. Without treatment, Messi's growth and physical development would have been severely limited, potentially preventing him from pursuing his dream of becoming a professional footballer. Fortunately, Messi's talent on the football pitch caught the attention of local scouts, who recognized his incredible dribbling skills and ability to score goals. This eventually led to his enrollment in the Youth Academy at Barcelona, where he would receive the medical treatment he needed to grow and develop as a player. Messi's experience with growth hormone deficiency has had a profound impact on his life and career and has influenced his values and character as a person. He has spoken out about the importance of perseverance and determination in the face of adversity and has credited his success on the football pitch to his hard work and dedication. 
Moreover, Messi's experience with growth hormone deficiency has also drawn attention to the importance of access to health care and medical treatment for all children. Regardless of their background or circumstances, his foundation, the Leo Messi Foundation, has worked to improve access to health care and education. for disadvantaged children around the world, and has highlighted the need for greater investment in social welfare and development.